Yeah. Okay, so let's just put this on now. And that's okay? Go ahead. My, uh, my name is Edie McEwen, and I am a faculty member in the Communication Arts and Sciences Department. And last summer, I was a member of the Cohort II for the eLearning Academy. And it was at that time that I first seriously looked at uh, choosing an e-textbook. And so today, I'd like to talk with you about e-textbooks, the process that we went through in thinking about it, the process we went through in deciding about it, and then certainly a lot of the lessons that we've learned about utilizing e-textbooks in our class this semester. So the first lesson that we learned was that we uh, were looking at, our, at how to go about trying to manage then our student learning and our student engagement, which e Academy was all about, in terms of then some of the costs. And so we started to think to ourselves that, that a pedagogy we would like to implement a technology was the clickers. And we started to realize those clickers cost like 30 to $35. And as we started to think about that additional cost on top of our already uh, high, fairly high textbook cost, that started to make us a little nervous. So we were having a discussion one day there at the Academy, and the Chancellor's Office came on, and they talked about some of the textbook initiatives that they were having. And that was the first time that it really sunk into us that we really could uh, utilize an e-textbook, and perhaps that might uh, be the solution to part of our cost problem. However, one of the lessons that we learned is that lots of people are starting to work on this, and so as we've gotten more used to looking at it, we're finding that publishers are looking, working on this, the, the, um, uh, our AS textbook offices, as well as certainly the Chancellor's Office here at Chico State. So lots of people are, are delving into this. So in terms of us deciding what we were going to do, we started with the objective for our class, because obviously that our decision for using a textbook had to be driven from the objective. We then made a list of the main concepts that we wanted in a textbook, and then we decided that we wanted to use a book then that had an e-textbook. So along the way then, we made a list of, of criteria then, and we sat down, and I'm the small group coordinator, and so consequently I had every paper textbook about small groups, and I even had the current edition, so I was very happy about that. We didn't know how to go about getting e-textbooks at that time, and so we started calling publishers. So one afternoon we sat up in an office and we started calling publishers to ask them if they had e-textbooks. And one of the really interesting things that we discovered is that publishers don't necessarily know if they have an e-textbook, because, though they should, because one of the reasons it's happened is that they have gone together and have uh, made a site called www.coursemart.com. And that is a consortium of the five major higher ed publishers. And they created this, and this is where they have launched in all their e-textbooks. Now, it makes sense that if you call the publisher that they should know if an e-textbook was available. But interestingly enough, out of the six books that we were particularly interested in, three of the publishers didn't know that. Now, once we learned about CourseSmart, when somebody said, oh, that should be under CourseSmart, and then I logged into CourseSmart, here I discovered that I had been logged into numerous of these small group textbooks already. And obviously, the publishers had sent me out an email and, you know, it's sort of one of those publisher emails that when I'm going through my email quickly, I just um, deleted. And so consequently, I had these, actually I had more than five. I had all the e-textbooks e that existed actually already sitting in my course smart folder. So that was really interesting to us that necessarily the publishers don't always know everything that's occurring. Now, one of the other major drivers then for us was cost, because since we knew that we wanted to use this clicker technology and we knew that was going to cost $30, we started taking a look at costs. And so the initial cost is we looked at the textbook that we're currently using, and that textbook new is now $107. It continues to get more expensive. Uh, that e-textbook was $69. So we figured adding the $30 cost to the um, use to the textbook still is bringing it up over $100. As we started then going down our criteria for the textbook based on our objectives, then we actually identified another textbook that we were really more interested in. And surprisingly to us, it was actually cheaper. One of the reasons I think it's cheaper is because it has less photos and other those, other those kinds of things, but the content was excellent. When we checked in under CourseSmart then, we found that students could buy it for $35 if they went directly through CourseSmart. And so then as I'm beginning the semester and I'm telling my students about this great source, they can buy this e-textbook at the bookstore, figuring that they would add, you know, 10 or 15 percent of the cost, I was shocked to discover that the actual cost turned out to be 
And so when I went and talked with uh, the textbook manager, Linda Riggins, she was astonished when I told her that I could have told my students to purchase it through CourseSmart and it only had been $35 for them. So the sources then of where the bookstore is getting their e-textbook is something that she's actually at a series of meetings this week to try to find out because she says she goes, somebody's making an awful lot of market there if, if I could buy it for $35 through CourseSmart. So that's, that's an important conversation to have when you're considering e-textbook purchases. Now, I also then talked with the bookstore manager about what books my uh, students had purchased. And interestingly enough, only 48 out of my 84 students purchased their book through the bookstore. 14% uh, of them did choose an e-textbook. The other 43 chose a paper pack, pack book. And so over the last month, I've been talking to my students, trying to find out, so where did the rest of you get them from? And so that other 40-some percent got them from other sources. Interestingly enough, 2% of my students don't even have a textbook. <laughs> they are just sharing a book. And so if they're roommates or something like that, they decided that they would share. So that was interesting. So like I said, about 20% of my students have an e-textbook. So uh, the ones that went to AS Bookstore spent about $60. The other ones went on online, and some of them went online and got into like Barnes & Noble or through Amazon. They got into a variety of sources. None of them, though, managed to find CourseSmart because I was expecting someone to tell me that they only spent $35. But the average co the cost on other line options was about $50. So that's still $15 more than they could have. Paperback, 78% of them did overall did buy a paperback book. Uh, like I say, about, oh, 36 of them, I think, got them for the bookstore. Half of them rented it because it was only $38. And one of the things that we were initially concerned about the e-textbook for is because they only get an e-textbook, they buy either $35 worth, only entitles them to six months worth of that book. And then once then that six months is over, that, that book is gone. And so I was surprised at how many rent them because that's exactly the same process. So the, I would say the vast majority, more than half of the students then that got their, their book from someplace else are actually renting it because the cost was only $38. So again, when they compared the $60 or even the $50 to get the e-textbook, renting was still cheaper. Uh, many of my students also, the other ones that got the paperback, they went through like Amazon or Half.com or some of those other uh, sources, and they, they ranged in prices for $40 to $55. So, I, as I say, I, I was really quite astonished at the wide variety of places that students got textbooks. And for some of them, cost was a major driver, but not as much as, as I thought that it was going to be. So when I asked them why they bought the books that they did, many of them did say the initial cost. They also said that they tend to buy their books then based on when they absolutely need them for a class. And so they'll put off buying one if they, if they don't need it for a while. A number of them that bought the new or used paperbacks um, in the bookstore said that they really want to participate in the buyback program because for a number of books, they guarantee 50% back, and so they figure that they're going to get an additional cost. As I said, a lot of them talk about how soon they need the text. And so in my class, I don't know why, I started having clicker quizzes the first week of class. That was not a smart strategy in the, in the long run. But so obviously my students needed their textbook. And so a number of them said that they actually ordered online. They would have preferred a paper version, but they ordered the e-text simply because that they needed it quickly in order to take those quiz. Then I, I, this is a freshman class, and I'm teaching three sections of it this semester. And the parents purchasing the book, and so they could have cared less how the parents purchased it, was that also another reason why they got the book that they did. They just got whatever their parents bought for them or sent them. And so I think the lesson that we learned here was that regardless um, that the six-month e-textbook term that we were really worried about ahead of time, I, I don't think we need to worry about them because the majority of the students either are planning on selling the book back or were renting them. Now, when I talked to the students then, as I gathered in my different classes, the ones that have used the e-textbook, for the most part, they gave really positive reviews. When I asked them why they picked it, most of them said that it's because of their technology-oriented, that they had a laptop, that they liked bringing their laptop to class, and consequently, I, I found that they not only are bringing their laptop to class, but they're also bringing it to their small group meetings that they hold outside of class. They also said that they liked a lot of the features of the e-text. And so once they learned how to use it, they liked it. And so an e-textbook, for example, you can put in a word, and it'll pop it up throughout the e-textbook where that word is. Or they can take notes, and they said, we type much faster than we write. 
or we can put a little sticky note on a page that we want to go back to. And so as we were discussing this in class one day, several students were going, well, I didn't think e-textbooks could do that. And so I think that probably I should have pulled up my course smart version at the, the first day of class, and I should have shown students how it actually works rather than just telling them, because I think telling them and showing them are two different uh, reasons. The reason I picked this picture, by the way, is because the negative reviews were that students felt like they get too distracted. A couple of students that actually have the e-textbook, they said every time they sat down to start reading their e-textbook, they would get on Facebook or they would go shopping or they would talk to somebody else, and so they never managed to read the textbook for very long. Quite a number of the ones also that didn't like it said that they really found that they don't like reading on the computer. And so again, those, those are, I think, as individual student preferences. But overall, though, the ones that did have the e-textbook, they are much more positive in their outlook about, about the negative. And they all, most of them said, I'd say 90% of them said that they would purchase another one. They did say, though, a really interesting thing, and that is that they would not want an e-textbook for all of their classes. And so I thought that was kind of interesting. So they said they'd pick and choose which ones to have the e-textbooks for. So they'd pick the more expensive books uh, to get the e-textbook. So then when I asked them, the students, why they did not choose an e-textbook, which obviously was about 80% of my class, they, of course, once again talked about cost. So cost really is one of the drivers. And the fact that our e-textbook at the bookstore cost $60 immediately caused many students not to get it. Renting, like I said, was only 30, was only 38, and purchasing it online was about 40 to 55 dollars. So again, cheaper than they could get at the bookstore. A lot of them said that they actually like the paper textbook, that they like to, you know, carry it with them to bring it to class. And then the other reason that a significant about 25 percent of my students said is that they did not have um, access to a computer at home that was readily available when they wanted to study. And so consequently then, I think that the lesson I really learned from this is that really an e-textbook is really not for everyone. And that was one of the issues that I had mentioned the first day when I introduced the e-textbook, is that if you didn't have computer access on a regular basis when you're going to study, that would probably be a, uh, not a good choice. So I think overall, the lessons that we learned is that I have seen no impact. I looked at my grades the other day now that I know what students have the e-textbook and, and didn't. So I looked at the last couple of of quizzes that we've, the major quizzes that we've had, and I didn't see any difference in the students in terms of their grades when I pulled out their grades between the students that had an e-textbook and those that didn't. So I didn't see um, any difference. I, the students, when they, when we do some activity in class where they like to refer to their book, like I say, that most of the students that have an e-textbook, they tend to bring their laptops anyways, and so they had access to it. The students did say, however, though, that they did really like having the e-textbook when they were meeting with their group, so that the whole entire group didn't all have to drag their book to, to the class because they knew somebody was bringing their laptop and would have their e-textbook with them. So that was interesting. The other thing that I, that I learned that I think is more important is that I need to spend a little bit more time explaining the different options to my students at the beginning of class, first day and maybe then explain why they should perhaps consider the bookstore, other alternatives. Obviously, the bookstore is certainly into the, you know, has the rental option right there available up by the text on, on the second floor as well. So they're obviously using, expanding more options. I also, so the, one of the final lessons certainly is that cost still does matter to students. And so I would certainly follow through with AS Bookstore and not just, you know, have, have the students have to spend from 35 that I know they could have purchased it for because they could go directly to Course Smart instead of having to spend 60 at the bookstore. Now, when I talked with the bookstore about what are the advantages of going to using the bookstore, they will allow the students to, to, to turn back in an e-textbook. So if for some reason they happen to buy a wrong one or pick it up, they will allow them to return it. Whereas if they do go through directly through Course Smart, if they get the wrong one, they have purchased the, long, the wrong one and they own it for six months. So I have not yet decided personally if I'm going to tell my students to go directly to CourseSmart. That is obviously the cheapest. I know it'll only cost $35. I feel like I sort of need to support the bookstore and try to support the associated students. But after this semester and the, the difference in cost, I'm not sure I want to do that again. I think the bottom line is it comes back down to an individual student choice, what, what they most prefer. But as I've been learning about this, I really have coming, I'm coming to find that there's all kinds of things that are coming. 
um, that when I was talking with the, the bookstore a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about the digital marketplace, which is a chancellor, I think it's working through the chancellor's office, where they are trying to get some high um, classes that lots of students take, which are small group classes, one of those, and then they're going to actually then make available the textbook and small little digital bites that I'm thinking that we can probably embed in our VISTA class. Now, how they're, they, she, she's not quite sure because they've never done it with a, like a small group class. Um, how the students would pay for that, I don't know yet because if the students have to pay before I can load it onto VISTA, that would be nightmarish there at the beginning of the semester. So I, I don't know how, that, how that's going to be. Certainly we can do, there's lots of free materials out there, and so we certainly embedded a number of those things in the VISTA course, and so that makes then some chapters we don't have to read as much of, or we can almost eliminate because there's so much free material out there. So I think that there's starting to be more and more options, and that students that are kind of interested in the options that are available, and then they're going to make the best choice for themselves. So I think, like I said, it had no impact, I don't think, on, on the teaching or on their test taking or their understanding of the concepts, which I was concerned about initially. So I think it's just a matter of if they get distracted or they can study well through the computer, then they can do it. I did have a couple of students just today that they told me that they'd been thinking about it because I've been talking to them about it this last few weeks. And one of them said that one of their siblings has an iPad and that they are starting to load then several e-texts onto their iPad. And that since that is much more easily transportable, that they would perhaps like that if they could load it onto their iPad. And so I asked them, I go, well, wouldn't that cause you to be distracted? And they said, well, yes, but I think I'd like it better. So I think that they don't know what they like themselves either. Like I say, the majority of the students that use the e-text really liked it. The majority of the students that had paper texts would not trade it in and were happy with their choice as well. So I think that by us using our clickers, we explain their options and then they can decide how they're going to spend their money. So I think that's, that's the end of what I have to say, unless you have any questions. Next question. Um, what, <clears throat> the percentage of students who uh, mentioned that they didn't have access to the computer mm -hmm. where they wanted to study, do you know about what the percentage was on those students? That um, purchased an e-textbook? That, that claimed that they, they wouldn't purchase the textbook because... Right. All of, all of them said that. So there was about 20% of my class that said that they did not have access to a computer at home. And, and I'm teaching a couple of EOP sections this semester, too. My sections are EOP course links. And so a number of them then live at home. And so consequently, I think that they didn't have access at home. And so they worried about not having access at home on, you know, at night as well as on the weekend. And so then they all said that they would just only buy a paperback textbook so they could have it at all the time. Yeah. So offering that as the only solution is probably I think it's the only solution. I don't think that's workable because that doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't accommodate everybody. And I was surprised at how high that percentage was. I thought it was going to be really small. And I was quite surprised at how high the percentage of, of students that did not have access at home. And so, and when I asked them, they said, they said they, you know, all papers and everything, they all do at school while they're here at school. One thing that interested me the most was, and you mentioned this, was, I was going to ask if the students did any better or worse with the e-text versus the, the paper. I, no, just, I mean, like I say, and I, I didn't do an in-depth assessment. I just looked at the last two, you know, there are 40-point quizzes, two of them, and I looked to see if there was a difference, and I didn't see a difference. So I think that they're accessing the information as easily. I don't think it's any worse or better. Okay. All right. Anybody online? Okay. All right. Well, I want to thank Susie McEwen for that presentation on the text. Uh, we're going to close the archive now, so anybody that uh, wants to watch it will be able to log in and uh, check out the archive. Archive recording.